What happens when two storms get together? Well, a lot of things could happen. Both storms could die, or they could combine to create something major, okay? We're gonna talk about how this happens using a real life chase day from this past season. Are you ready? Let's get started. Recent science has been doing a lot of work on the role of storm mergers in the development of tornadoes. What type of mergers are helpful? What type of mergers are, well, not so helpful? Because it doesn't, the, the, as with all things with weather, I've talked about this so many times on this channel, it depends. There are rules that are broken every single time. There are exceptions to every single rule in weather. Don't, don't forget that. Don't forget it. So, and today we're gonna take a look at when two storms get together and they produce something major, okay? But we're also gonna take a look at what could have gone differently, I think. Let's find out. Let's go. As with all things weather, of course, there is a bit of a more complicated uh, layer to this. But to keep it simple on the channel today, we're gonna talk about mergers as if there's two different types as a kind of generalization. One is a destructive merger, one are constructive mergers, okay? Let's start with a destructive merger though, because this one seems pretty easy and pretty obvious, right? Two storms, they get together and then they die. A great example of this was May 29th, 2018 in Western Oklahoma, where these two storms merged together and they ended up basically causing a giant surge of outflow and cutting off the updrafts. And before too long, that storm died. Now, another example of a constructive merger though, the other side of this, the constructive mergers is when two storms get together but they also do something incredible where it just kind of merges into the other one and you get a tornado. This happens most commonly, I, I would like to call it when there's what is called a nudger, a storm that kind of a little baby storm on the backside of a supercell that kind of pushes that rear flank downdraft along that starts that process in the lowest levels. When you see that nudger starting to take place, you start seeing things happen in the lowest parts of the storm. This has happened countless times. Uh, I have seen this happen May 23rd, 20, uh, 2024. We saw this this last year on April 24th. That's the day we're gonna talk about though, because when you see these little nudgers come in, they're, they're little baby storms, they're coming in on the southwest flank of a storm, they're just kind of pushing that rear flank downdraft along, but they're not big enough storms to really interfere with the updraft processes because you need an updraft to stay clean for tornadoes in this case. If you have two updrafts merging and all kinds of, destructive collisions happening, it's not gonna work out very well. So what you wanna see is, you wanna see these two storms merge and do some really radical things. Now the first place I wanna start today is in the morning forecast, because I think this is an important piece of the puzzle for this day. To, on this day, there's a dry line. It's draped over Texas. Intersecting that dry line is an outflow boundary left over from last night's storms. This boundary moved south throughout the morning. I was honestly worried it wasn't going to stall and the day was just hosed because if you get that, it's hard to get a storm to root on that boundary and do amazing things. This was already a pretty marginal environment. There's enough shear for supercells, enough instability. It's, it's all there if the boundary isn't undercutting these storms and cutting off their inflow. So the goal is, is as this boundary stalls, is to find where that boundary intersects the dry line and to go there. That's where the best lift is for storms to get them actually up and going today. But also it's where you want, where, where you'll see a lot of the spin and such in lower atmosphere, a lot of increased vorticity. This is the magic zone for today's chase. Now, it took a while for this storm to get going, a really long while, in fact, but when it finally did, it was not that healthy looking for a lot of its early portions. I think it was battling with the cold side of the boundary. It was also just dealing with the kind of marginal environment. The shear wasn't really the best. But finally, after a bit, we did get this anti-cyclonic tornado south of Silverton, Texas. But this was, this was cool. And this was really, I mean, if this was the only thing I saw on this day, I would have considered this day a wild success. If you see a tornado this photogenic, doesn't matter if it's cyclonic or anti-cyclonic, that's really awesome. So this tornado was cool, but the best was yet to come from this storm. And what I saw in the atmosphere kind of clued me as to what my next move was. 
there were a couple of things happening around me that I noticed. Uh, first off, it's the storm, the main storm that just produced the anticyclonic tornado. There were a couple of roads that went east from my position. They were gonna really risk hail, and the storm was nowhere close to producing a tornado at this point. Nowhere close. The base was elevated. I think it was still kind of battling that cold air, but also the environment still wasn't quite prime time. To get a storm to really do the thing today, it became obvious we were gonna need maybe just a little bit extra. And as I looked to the south, I saw what might just be a little bit extra. This storm was really robust, but it was gonna pass well to the west. However, it's uh, like anvil. Rain was going to just kind of maybe act as a little bit of a nudger. I saw this happening in real time. So I decided we were gonna go south through this core as this dying out left split merged with our storm, our parents' storm, I thought maybe, just maybe, we would see a tornado. And so I watched this process play out. As I sat in the field and watched these two storms do their thing and start to interact, I noticed that we started getting a wall cloud, and then the base really started looking good. The storm to the west was really starting to interact with our parents' storm. And I was gonna head east to maybe kind of get a south option and stay ahead of this thing because I thought, eh, maybe, but it happened so fast. One of the things I have noticed ever since really diving into the science of storm mergers and what can help and what doesn't is that usually the effect of the merger becomes apparent very quickly and it happens very quickly. I almost forgot about that in this uh, scenario, but I decided to turn around and I found this road and we, blasted north at was what was going to be a big, big tornado. Boy, that's gonna be big. It's already down, just so y'all know, it's already down. Lots of debris on the ground, but when this thing plant plants, it's gonna be a wedge. That's just gigantic. The big thing that I notice with this tornado is that it really really took off and it was really visible at the beginning a lot of times with these merger tornadoes uh one i think really good example of this might have been the more tornado in 2013 but they're very visible at the beginning but as they go on they do have periods of getting wrapped in rain because that nudging storm does cause a bit more precip in their rfd so you get that rain kind of wrapping around but then it thins that sort of thing but this was really a cool tornado because it was also out there in the middle of nowhere. It was huge, gigantic, big tornado. And uh, we just watched it. So looking back at this and looking at the radar imagery, it, it was pretty obvious why this happened. You had a little nudger on the southwest side of the storm. You can see it happening right here on this radar loop. Look at this. And as this storm really wrapped up, really produced a tornado, it also had that period where it kind of got a little bit rain wrapped. This does happen oftentimes when this happens because that nudge does load water in the RFD. So it's kind of like early, it looks great, maybe middle not, maybe in, maybe, but you know, it, it but it, this thing just got wrapped, wrapped, wrapped up in rain toward the end. But it was still a really cool tornado. On this day, thankfully, this merger happened where there was nothing present. This tornado hit just about nothing at all. Power lines, some bushes, some anthills, maybe a prairie dog colony, I don't know. But this tornado passed over open land. I used to think that storm mergers were really bad. I used to hate crowded storm modes, and I still do, because to a certain extent, crowded storm modes are going to give you a lack of tornadoes or a lack of photogenicness. This was a good, happy medium, the exception to the rule. Crowded storm modes don't always mean bad. Sometimes it may mean that the interaction you're looking for, for a tornado, could be hidden within that mess. If you love the science of weather, if you love weather education, this channel's for you. Be sure to subscribe. You're gonna really love this video popping up. And hey, remember, weather's for everybody. That includes you. We'll see you next time.